Right, I've got a smartphone, a clip-on mic and 10 minutes of spare time. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Plug Life Television. Hi, I'm Ewan McTurk. I'm an electric chemist and an electric vehicle battery engineer who's been driving EVs since 2009. Recently, I gave a webinar for the Energy Saving Trust called Under the Bonnet, Electric Vehicle Battery Misconceptions. Now, the feedback from that webinar has been brilliant, so thank you to everyone who tuned in to watch it live and has since caught up with it on YouTube. Unfortunately, there were so many questions asked during the live Q&A session that we didn't have enough time to read them all out. Therefore, I've decided to dedicate the first few episodes of Plug Life TV to answering some of those questions in a bit more detail. First question is, would it be a simple task to swap out a current lithium ion battery pack for a new type of battery or would the car need modifications? Now to explain this, I'm going to go back to the basic principles of battery pack design, showing where you can retrofit new cell chemistries and where you can't, and also highlighting some new technology that's overcoming the current hurdles to retrofitting new chemistries into battery packs. The easiest way to imagine a battery pack is like a staircase, for each cell is like a single step. As is convention for cell terminals, here red is positive and black is negative. We need enough steps to reach the height that we need to climb to. In this case, the height is the potential difference or voltage of the system, which in this case is an electric car's motor. We will need enough steps in series, where there are cells connected positive to negative to positive to negative and so on, to reach the system voltage. During discharge, electrons climb up the stairs in the battery pack, i.e. from the negative terminal of one step to the positive terminal of the one above it, whilst lithium ions travel from the negative to the positive terminal inside each cell. Electrons from the top cell are pushed out into the external circuit, powering the car's electric motor as they climb down the entire system voltage to reach the positive terminal of the bottom step. The opposite happens during charging. The power being delivered by the pack can be calculated using the formula P equals IV, where P is the power in watts, I is the current in amps, and V is the voltage in volts. Sometimes we find that our staircase is the correct height but isn't wide enough, that there aren't enough chemical reactions inside the cell to supply electrons quickly enough to power the car. Therefore, we need to increase the system capacity by widening the staircase to allow more electrons up and down it. This is done by increasing the number of cells in parallel, which is where cells are connected positive to positive and negative to negative. This allows us to multiply the maximum power output of the battery pack by the number of cells installed in parallel. Conveniently, having more cells in parallel for a given load also means that each individual cell is worked less hard, which means that less heat is dissipated and the lifespan of the pack is, theoretically, increased. The total energy contained within the pack can be calculated using the formula E equals PT, where E is the energy in watt-hours, P is the power as before, in other words, current multiplied by voltage, and T is the time in hours. For example, a fully charged Nissan Leaf with a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, that's 30,000 watt hours, has enough energy to run its motor continuously at 30 kilowatts for one hour, 15 kilowatts for two hours, or 60 kilowatts for half an hour. Since we know the system voltage and capacity of the cells in ampere hours, we have the voltage, current and time data required to calculate the energy contained within the pack. Just multiply the capacity of a parallel string by the sum of the voltages in series. To increase the capacity of the parallel string further, we can increase the number of cells in parallel and widen our staircase up to the point that they can no longer physically fit in the battery pack. Occasionally, there are improvements to cell chemistries in the laboratory that allow the system capacity to be increased and the staircase to be widened without physically adding more cells. In other words, the energy density of individual cells is increased. This is typically achieved by reducing the width of electrode current collectors and separators, increasing the active material loading, that is, the amount of positive and negative electrode that actually takes part in the chemical reaction, and subtle tweaks in chemistry. A prime example is the Samsung SDI prismatic cells used in the BMW i3. These cells were boosted from 60 ampere hours to 94 ampere hours, whilst retaining fundamentally the same chemistry, giving a wider step without physically increasing the width of the step by adding more cells. In the case of the BMW i3, the old and new cells are the same voltage, meaning that there are the same number of steps in the staircase and the cells physically fit in the same space. Therefore, old BMW i3s can be upgraded to new, higher capacity packs. Every now and then, there's a major development in the lab and a brand new cell chemistry is commercialized. As this will likely differ significantly from a standard lithium ion cell that we know today, there's a good chance that the height of the steps in the staircase will be different too. If the cell voltage is lower, and therefore the step height is lower, then we will have insufficient system voltage if we have the same number of steps in the staircase. 
We could add more steps to the staircase in order to install this revolutionary new pack in the car, but this would not be compatible with the vehicle's existing battery management system, or BMS. This is because there will be more cells in series, i.e. more steps in the staircase, than there are voltage sensing inputs on the BMS. The BMS measures the voltage of every step for safety purposes. Therefore, in a scenario where there are more steps than inputs, the original number of steps will be catered for, but the voltage sense inputs for any additional steps will have nowhere to go. The BMS would be unable to monitor these additional steps to determine if they're straying out with their safe operating voltage range, so the pack as a whole would be unsafe to install in the car. If the voltage, and therefore step height, of the new cell chemistry is higher than a lithium ion cell, then less steps would be required to meet the system voltage. There is a risk, however, that we would burn the system out if we stray too much over the original system voltage by having the same number of steps in the staircase. However, if we have less steps than voltage sense inputs on the BMS, this will result in spare inputs on the BMS. And when we power the vehicle up, the BMS will detect that voltage inputs are missing and trigger a BMS alarm. As a result, the car will refuse to start. On a similar note, the 24 kilowatt hour Nissan LEAF cannot be upgraded to a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack because, despite having similar cell chemistries and consequently similar cell voltages and step heights, the battery module configurations are different. The 24 kilowatt hour LEAF has modules containing two cells in series and two in parallel, whilst the 30 kilowatt hour model has four cells in series and two in parallel, so the BMS voltage sense connections are incompatible. However, there have been developments in battery management technology that will allow us to overcome these issues and retrofit virtually any chemistry into an electric vehicle. Decozy has developed a wireless battery management system, where voltage sense wiring is removed and replaced with individual voltage monitoring chips on every cell. Using a proprietary near-field RF channel protocol, which is patented by the way, so don't try to steal it, the Decozy cell management system is able to feed the voltage, temperature, state of charge, state of health, and history of every single cell in the pack into one neat compact BMS input. The Ducosi system is chemistry agnostic and doesn't care about the height or number of steps, thus making it future-proof. As long as you have enough steps in the staircase to give the battery pack a high enough system voltage, and as long as you can physically squeeze enough cells into your battery pack to give a wide enough staircase to meet performance requirements, then the Ducosi cell management system will handle it and will readily accept any new cells equipped with Ducosi cell monitoring chips throughout the lifetime of the vehicle. Well, I hope that's answered your question, and I'll try and answer a few more in the coming weeks. In the meantime, follow me at 106Ewan on Twitter to keep up to date with the latest battery and electric vehicle developments, and I'll soon have the Twitter account for Plug Life TV up and running as well. See you soon for another episode of Plug Life Television.